Now, our next guest says that while the new law, the security law, may benefit Hong Kong, a balance has to be struck between public order and civil liberties. Let's bring in Hong Kong Basic Law Committee member Albert Chen. Albert, well, very welcome to the show here. Uh, the first question yes. is, it's about that balance itself. I mean, what do we have to balance uh, on, as it were, uh, given that we don't know where the demarcations are, do we, in some ways? I mean, what are the limits to freedom of information, freedom of speech? On top of that, what is uh, terrorism exactly here as well? I mean, could defacing a bus be uh, seen as a terrorist act? It could, by some interpretations, Albert, tell me. Well, um... This national security law creates four types of offenses. Uh, the first relates to secession, such as uh, promoting Hong Kong independence. The second relates to subversion against the regime, uh, such as trying to, to change or overthrow the political system in, in China. Thirdly, there are terrorist offenses. And finally, there is... A, what is known as collusion with foreign political forces to endanger China's national uh, security or Hong Kong security. Now, you, you mentioned terrorism. Um, actually, the definition of terrorism in this law is consistent with uh, terrorist laws in, in other jurisdictions, including, um, you know, I, I think terrorism is an internationally uh, recognized concept. So this definition of terrorism which we find in the law is actually um, not out of line with uh, other laws on terrorism in, in most other jurisdictions. So, of course, defeating a bus is, is not terrorism. Um, uh, terrorism is usually is defined uh, to refer to acts which, um, which are aimed at a particular political objective and uh, which uh, falls within um, a, a, a list of um, circumstances, such as uh, most of them involve violence, um, but they may also I I I include um, um, you know, damaging, uh, damaging uh, some electronic system, which, uh, which uh, uh, is um, uh, uh, the basis of some public uh, infrastructure or, or services. I mean, but you just mentioned what they all covered. You went into terrorism in a little bit of detail, but the others are all, again, you know, where are the demarcations? Uh, you know, but no, I'm thinking, uh, how think, does it affect uh, the are, common the law system also... in Hong Kong at the moment? Sorry? Uh, I think the other categories are also quite clearly uh, defined. Um, I think if necessary, you can discuss any particular offense which you're interested in. But in my view, um, the definitions are quite clear, and it is perfectly possible uh, for Hong Kong people to avoid uh, committing the acts specified in the law. And I don't think it is unreasonable to, to, to require them uh, not to, uh, to commit these particular acts, uh, which most of them, 90% of these acts, are also outlawed uh, in other other jurisdictions, other countries. Of course, there are particular aspects such as promoting Hong Kong, in Hong Kong independence, which you know may not be, um, which may not have a counterpart in countries like UK or, or Canada, uh, because as you know, in, in UK you, we can promote Scottish independence, or in Canada, Quebec independence. So, so there are a few provisions which do not have counterparts in other jurisdictions. But most. Other provisions like you know, overthrowing the, the government, um, terrorism, and, and so on, are, are actually in the national security laws of other countries as well. All right. Now, the thing is that we've had the UK saying they could convert a lot of these British national overseas passports eventually into permanent British citizenship. And that's something that China said is, uh, goes against the 1984 Sino-British Joint Declaration. Now, that's what they're saying. But then just two years ago, the Chinese Foreign Ministry declared that that declaration itself was a historical document that had no longer any realistic meaning. So... Again, you know, it's, it's a la carte when it comes to what legislation 
and what principles you work off, and that permeates right across the board with regard to this bit of uh, law as well. Uh, on this BNO business, it's actually not directly covered in the John Declaration. At the time the John Declaration was entered into in 1984, Britain and China entered into a memorandum of understanding regarding the, the nationality of uh, Hong Kong people. Because under colonial law, Hong Kong people, or many of them, were British nationals overseas, or British dependent territory citizens. But after 1997, uh, under the new, um, new uh, 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 legal regime, these Hong Kong people became Chinese citizens. So there was a need to, to work out some arrangement about what would be the nationality status of these people under Chinese law, Hong Kong law, and under British law. So an arrangement was reached whereby um, holders of BNO passports would still be regarded as, regarded as Chinese citizens under Hong Kong law and Chinese law, even though Britain may regard them as um, holding a form of British citizenship. But, they, but, but at, at that time, it was oh, agreed that back... people holding this form, yes. Hello? Oh, but going back to the freedom of speech, I mean, how can there be freedom of speech when uh, the Chinese government keeps expanding what constitutes a violation? Already it's saying that the main chance of protesters would violate the law. I mean, what's your take on that? Um, uh, freedom of speech is, is indeed limited by this new law, but it is mainly the freedom to advocate Hong Kong independence or the freedom to advocate overthrowing the Chinese Communist Party. So, so I, I must uh, admit that there is some limitation on freedom of speech in relation to secession and subversion. So under what circumstances can the people criticize the government without getting into trouble? Well, criticisms of the government or its policies are, are, are lawful. The law only prohibits um, organized uh, attempts or, or, of movements to, for example, um, change the Chinese political system so that it is no longer a communist party-led system, or to advocate and, 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 uh, and try to uh, achieve Hong Kong independence. So these, um, these movements uh, uh, or organized activities for these purposes are indeed prohibited under the law.